Well, crap. A couple of months ago, I promised you guys I would do a Russian aircraft pronouncing video once we reach 5000 likes on the How to Pronounce German Aircraft Names video. The thing is, I was never really expecting that video to ever reach 5000 likes. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's my most liked video to date. Uh, the problem is you guys actually did it. The problem is also, I don't actually speak Russian. So, I enlisted in the Russian Air Force. Now, they didn't really like a German guy just knocking at the door and trying to get into a pilot seat. So, they fitted me out with a P-02. The P-02 is a pretty rare aircraft in its own right, given that it's only really an invent vehicle. Although, it has been pretty much more... Uh, more available as of late. This is a biplane, it doesn't have any frontal mounted guns. You do have even as a gunner in the back, although he isn't very talkative. I'm pretty sure the KGB has just really employed him to watch over me, because I don't think I've ever actually watched him talk or heard him talk at all. But he does have uh, control of a big gun, so I will not really um, question his presence there. Now, the P02 has a very, very, very low takeoff and stall speed. In fact, not only is this probably, in fact, it most likely is the lowest takeoff speed in the game of only 70 km per hour, which, by the way, is just about as fast as, it, uh, as an aircraft carrier. You can actually hover over an aircraft carrier with this thing, kind of like a helicopter or a VTOL aircraft. But this thing is also the slowest aircraft in the game, by far. You know where other aircraft usually stall at around 180 to 200 km per hour indicated airspeed? This thing has a top speed of about 140 in a straight line. In fact, this thing will break its wings at 300 km per hour, which is like the stall speed of jets, for example. It is not a very fast aircraft. Now, the landing load isn't really anything special. You only have 200 kg and 250 kg bombs, if I'm not mistaken. Although, do not quote me on that just now because I'm not too sure of the bomb load. Given that I don't really fly this thing except for when I really want to troll around. I had some experience with flying this thing in jet battles. In fact, there's actually a funny real life uh, story of a American jet crashing whilst trying to attack a PO2, because a PO2 was just way too slow. And that's one of the advantages of having an aircraft that is such a low stall speed. You can, you can literally fly where other aircraft are stalling, and quite handily so, and still be maneuverable. This thing's actually pretty maneuverable at low speeds as well. Now we are trying this thing in simulator mode. Nothing too special here. The outside view. This is, by the way, the gun view. I actually, I actually found out something quite interesting, which is really nice for uh, making cinematics is that you can go into the gun view and still pivot the camera around with the head tracking unit that I have, which makes it really quite nice to look around uh, and kind of cheatsy at the same time. I had a game earlier in the Americans where I could actually control the aircraft whilst I was still in the gunner view. Now, given that this thing has such a low stall speed, I don't want to try and do some maneuvers here. Even is not really happy with this. Ah, so cable Touchdown. Um, one major event again, this thing has a fixed landing gear, so even if you touch the ground, it doesn't really matter too much. In fact, I'm pretty sure your wings will break off before the landing gear ever does, even when touching on the ground. So you, you can you can actually use this thing touching the ground when you are in certain dangerous situations. Now we barely made it under that um, under the bridge over there. We are facing off against Italians and Germans, and I think even has spotted an Italian aircraft over there. Oh, this is not good. This is not good whatsoever. Those Italians are nasty. Ever since the machine gun buff, they, they will rip you apart. Now, of course, nothing to worry, comrade. It is nothing to worry. Our PO2 is made out of stellinium. Although Stalin, was Stalin a thing like when this thing was created? I do not know. As the, as the night witches, they have been using the aircraft for a long while. Oh, Suka. Even! Why did you bring the vodka? Okay, we're safe, we're safe, okay, okay. 
Well, that did not quite work out. Rest in peace even, he was a very silent KGB stalker. Somehow we survived that crash, and somehow they haven't sent us to Gulag just yet. They have actually given us an even rarer aircraft. This is the I-301, the physical embodiment of Russian bias essentially. Slightly going off the role playing here, this aircraft is a bad rating 2.7, okay? It is a very rare Russian premium aircraft, it does count as a premium. It is only handed out in very uh, seldom events. Um, I actually got my hands on this in the last event, that was a couple months ago, where you had to be in the top 200 players of a uh, 4 versus 4 tournament, in arcade mode actually. Grinding for the tournament was hell and I ended up in 198th place or something like that. But I finally got this thing. I have been wanting this thing for a long time. And why? Well, let me tell you. Ah, oh, those Russian pilots never learn, do they? This thing at battle version 2.7 has two 7.62mm machine guns. As well as two 12.7mm machine guns. Pretty good, right? It also has a 23mm cannon! <laughs> and the best part is, all of those cannons are mounted in the nose. No way I'm approaching this A6M here, but sadly... Yeah. The A6M naval version is slightly too slow and I was too used to actually using jets in sim mode. Which, speaking of which, this thing is actually not too unlike a jet. The i 301 can't really turn too well. It it does turn decently well against Americans, but it's not really a turn fighter. The main advantage of this thing is the insane top speed for such a low bat rating aircraft. No problem catching up to this Japanese bomber who catches on fire. That has to be a guaranteed kill, right? Well, um, yeah, not quite. I'm not sure what this guy is, but he's definitely not a Japanese bomber. He's some kind of demon who just extu extu extinguished fires. Japanese actors are not supposed to extinguish fires. He did. So let's get the hell out of here. I don't want to get ruffle stumped by a demon. But top seed of this thing is really quite a nice advantage. 520 kilometers per hour is what you can usually reach at level flight. A little bit more in a dive, a little bit less whilst maneuvering. But as you can see on the top left corner, the speed is pretty much constant. This thing also has a very, very, very good energy retention. Which actually forces me to throttle down a bit in order to engage this A6M. Now, I was pretty sure this guy was actually aware of our presence, but since he was heading on the P40, well, that was just an easy target. And these guns will absolutely chew through everything. Now, the 23 isn't quite as strong as I would like it to be. You also only get 84 rounds and the fire rate isn't exactly the best. But coupled with the two 12.7mm Russian machine guns, which are amongst the best machine guns in the game, and the two 7.62s, which are really just additional filler, and them all being mounted in the nose, being so accurate, this thing is a beast. Sadly, I suck at flying it. And after wrecking another expensive prototype and rare aircraft, we are in our final aircraft for today. I'm pretty sure if I crash this one, Stalin is finally going to send me to the Gulag, so let's hope that we can actually kill some imperialist scum. This is the Yak 3 t This aircraft was available in the last um, Chronicles event, I think it was for the V-Day Chronicles event. This was the last aircraft you could unlock. It is a Yak 3 equipped with a 37mm cannon. That's pretty much it. The 37mm cannon is very, very, very fast firing. It's really kind of like an auto loader, auto cannon stuff type of deal. You also get two 20mm cans, if I'm not mistaken, with 100 rounds each. And that's pretty much it. It's essentially a Yak 9T, but with cannons instead of secondary machine guns. Now, I personally do not like this thing too much. The engine is very torquey in simulator mode, as you can see. I'm really uh, trying to fight the engine torque here. The all round visibility, thankfully, is very very good, you can actually see behind you, which you can't really do in many different aircraft. From my time in the American Air Force, actually, I've found that trying to fly, thing, trying to fly things like the Corsair, for example, is almost impossible in simulator mode. 
Uh, for one, because I hate 50s with a passion, and for two, because you really can't see anything behind you. Even with a head tracking unit where you can, like, move your head side to side, it doesn't really work. This thing, no problem. And I spot these two bombers over here and was kind of wondering why they are flying information back to base. And then I spotted some dots. Those seem to be A6Ms attacking RPE-8. How dare these bastards attack our glorious Russian comrades! Now the A6M can turn much much better than we do, at least in RB mode. The difference in simulator mode is that you have to manage yourself a little bit more. You don't get the uh, advantage of the instructor which actually turns things around quite a bit, as his wing is clipped off. Aircraft like the Spitfire, for example, are actually quite hard to, to use in simulator mode just because if you pull your stick too hard, you just go into a flat spin immediately, which is not exactly something you want to do in a low altitude dogfight. And other aircraft like, for example, the Americans actually turn better in comparison since you can simply pull a little bit harder and the enemy can't pull quite as hard, which makes it easier for you to keep up with them in a turn. Which doesn't mean you should actually dogfight in Americans. Still, you do not do that. Now, in this high town, I was kind of wondering what that smoking thing was, and it seems like it is a J7W, which is not good news. The J7W is a much, much better aircraft than this thing is, and in fact, these entire next couple of minutes are going to be a massive dogfight between me, a teammate in a Yak-1 and um, the enemy team with a J7W in what seems to be a key 83. And look at that thing go! It seems to have a fuel leak, uh, judging by the color. Usually you can determine by the color what kind of leak it is. This kind of smoke uh, indicates usually or water or a fuel leak. Fuel is a little bit darker than the water smoke, so I think this is a fuel leak. Water smoke usually is a bit more, well, white, as steam. And of course you have oil leaks which are just black and dark. And will also cause problems to you in simulator mode. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you fly behind an aircraft that's being very heavily damaged and has an oil leak, and you are very close to it, all that oil is actually going to stick to your windshield, making it very hard for you to see anything. The same, the same effect actually happens when you blow up your engine, for example, with the engine sitting in the front, of course, and all the oil gets splattered on your windshield. Now, in realistic mode, this isn't really a problem. You have third-person mode, you don't really need to copy it more for anything. You even have the, the virtual pilot's cockpit mode, which indicates you the elevation altitudes in which you can also use to shoot. In simulator mode, that's a bit different. You don't get any other views whilst you are in the air than the cockpit view. And I've had it happen actually that I had, for example, my Corsair, which has a very, a very long nose towards the front, having an oil leak, just covering my windscreen in uh, black goo, and me not really being able to see anything when trying to go for the runway. It, it makes landing even harder, as it is. Taking off in simulator mode is much easier than it is to land. Now, coupling that with not being able to see where you are going makes landing substantially harder. And, of course, if you then have to, to factor in carry landing as well, um, let's just say you should probably bail out instead of attempt to land at all. Now we're still trying to dogfight these guys, the X7 is going after the um, J actually no, the key 83. There is a H8K or H6K in the distance. I break off from the J7W just for a while, the J7W sadly kills my teammate. I should probably have kept on the J7W to save my teammate and now I'm kind of screwed because I'm going to be alone against two enemy Japanese fighters. And two Japanese fighters are much more capable than I am. The thing with the Yak 3T is... I don't really like it, to be honest. I mean, the Russians are known for being very good low-altitude aircraft. They just are. They are very fast, they generally have great energy retention, but this thing having the added weight of the 37mm cannon in the nose makes it feel kind of sluggish. I can barely keep up with the turns with the Ki-83 and the J7W, which then again isn't really much of a surprise, as that Ki-83 crashes! From the damage of the X7B early, the X7B taking revenge from the post-mortem, leaving me alone with the J7W. Um, 
But yeah, Japanese aircraft are known for being good turners, but the problem here is that both the Japanese J7W and the K83 also have much more engine power than I do, especially the J7W can just fly circles around me all day and I'm really struggling to keep up with him. Even with flaps, we're on just a bit too low of a speed for me to effectively use my aircraft in the turns, and I simply do not have the engine retention or the engine power to keep up with this guy. Now, given my engine is slightly damaged, it is a yellow engine at this moment, but still, the J7W is going to upplate me all day, every day. Couple that, of course, with the guns, which are weird. Now, I do prefer these guns over 50s. I just have an ingrown hate for 50s. Anything that has 50s, I can't fly. You can leave it your comments in the comment section. Oh, try stealth belts, try universal belts, try tracer belts. Guys, I've tried it all. 50s simply do not work for me. My aiming style is short bursts in the way of the enemy, not prolonged bursts following the enemy. And that's exactly what you need to do in 50s, which I cannot do. Oh, yeah. Shit. Thankfully, no kill to Jason W, and we actually survived this one. Only to be sent to the Gulag after. But I think I'm going to cut off this video here, kind of interrupting the commentary short. Um, I am actually going to go uh, on a vacation for a week, so don't expect too many videos unless I can make some more and release them over time. We'll see how this goes. But hopefully you have enjoyed this little simulator uh, excursion in rare Russian aircraft. Please save me from the Gulag, that Stalin is definitely going to send me to himself, probably propelled from the cannon of AKB2. And if you've enjoyed this video, of course, do leave it a like. My name is Michael Boom, and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky, take a deeper breath and give it time. You can walk the path among the lines, with your shattered frame of mind. Is that you could always stay, we can wait right here and play, until somehow you can find...